In this video, we're going to be talking about the Sabbath day. Is the Sabbath still on Saturday, or should we worship on Sunday? All of Christianity worships on Sunday, but the Seventh-day Adventists believe that the Sabbath is still the old Jewish Sabbath, and they still worship on Saturday, and they are obsessive, and they are militant about the fact that we are supposed to, so they say, worship on Saturday. And moreover, they claim that all Christians worshiped on Saturday up until the time of Constantine in the 4th century. And it was at that time that Constantine, who some say is the first pope, and the Catholic Church changed the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday to satisfy the pagans and to worship the sun god. So really, when you worship on Sunday, you aren't worshiping Jesus, you are worshiping the sun god, Sol Invictus. And so they claim that if you continue to worship on Sunday, you are going to receive the mark of the beast because it's false worship. But in this video, we're going to see that none of that, down to the last detail, is true. All Christians, down through the centuries, back to the time of the apostles, worshipped on Sunday. And we are going to see this clear as day. We are going to quote them in their writing, so you don't have to take our word for it. And we're going to see that all Christians worshipped on Sunday, going back to the earliest times, and that Constantine nor the Catholic Church actually changed the Sabbath. Hello everyone and welcome to Catholic Truth. My name is Brian Mercier, President of Catholic Truth, and I'm so happy that you're joining us today to learn some apologetics. And if you are interested in learning apologetics or you have a lot of questions and you would like to meet one-on-one -on -one with me, you can set up a time possibly with my secretary. You can talk to her and get more details from her. And if that's something you're interested in, you can contact us and we will set something up. We've already been meeting with people and it's been a joy and a blessing to share our knowledge with you. And if you would like to see what we do, check out our website, our Facebook, our Instagram, and everything else down below. Seventh-day Adventists are so obsessive with their dusty claims that they repeat over and over and over again, and they don't even listen to any other claims that anyone makes. They're not even open, it seems like, to the truth, or possibly to the truth, and they don't seem to have a lot of intellectual honesty because all Christians across the board from beginning to end, except for a couple small little cults, believe that the Sabbath is on Sunday, and they don't listen to the reasons why. And here's the thing. They tell me you have to worship on Sabbath. Saturday. The Sabbath is Saturday, and it's a commandment of God. And if you break that, then you break it forever, because the Bible says it's forever. And I always ask them, I said, do you circumcise your kids? And they they look at me, I'm like, what? Well, circumcision is an eternal covenant according to God. And if you don't practice that, then I guess you're going against the Bible. Passover is an eternal covenant with God. It says it was an eternal ordinance to be practiced forever by all people. Do they still practice Passover as Seventh-day Adventists? I doubt it, because some of these things have been fulfilled. They're all part of the law which Jesus fulfilled. And here's the thing. If you look in the New Testament, all Ten Commandments are reaffirmed in the New Testament. And sometimes, multiple times, they are reaffirmed, all except the Sabbath. The Sabbath is not once reaffirmed or commanded or enjoined on us in any way. Jesus does not command us to keep the Sabbath. The apostles do not command us to keep the Sabbath. Nobody in the New Testament commands us to keep the Sabbath. All of the other Ten Commandments we are told to keep, except the Sabbath. And even there are many verses which say, do not let people judge you about the Sabbaths and about holy days and things like that, because the Jews were already on Christians' backs for getting away from these things and not eating certain foods and all of that. Not to mention that they had started since the earliest times in the Bible, they were meeting on the first day of the week, which was the day after the Sabbath. And it was to break bread, it was to share prayers and commune in community with each other, and to celebrate and worship Jesus Christ. See, the first day of the week was the day that Jesus rose. It's also believed to be the day that God created the world. He brought life into the world. And so this is the day that Jesus rose to new life and he conquered death and he shattered death. And so we worship on Sundays, not to worship the sun god, Sol Invictus, or anything like that, but to worship the true God, the true Son of God, Jesus Christ our Lord, because he rose on that day, and that is what we celebrate. 
In ancient pagan times, Sunday was known as the Day of the Sun. And yes, it had pagan references, but Christians Christianized it and they applied it to Jesus, who is prophesied in Malachi 4.2 as the Son, S-U-N, of righteousness. And also we see the Lord's Day mentioned first and foremost in the Bible in Revelation 1.10 when John was caught up on the Lord's Day. So the Bible was the first one to call it the Lord's Day, the day our Lord rose. Listen to what the Bible says and listen to what the earliest Christians say on this. Acts 20 verse 7 says this, And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. Listen to what Acts 2.42 and following says, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of the bread and in the prayers. Fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. So we can see that even in the earliest days, they were already meeting on the first day of the week. Sure, they may have attended the Sabbath eventually, but the Jews eventually would kick the Christians out and they would have their own day, which is the day of Jesus Christ. Listen to what the earliest Christians and the earliest Christian writings that we have available say. This comes from the Didache, also known as the Writings of the Apostles, which was written around 70 AD. And it says this, On the Lord's day, gather yourselves and break bread. Give thanks, but first confess your sins, that your sacrifice may be pure. Likewise, St. Ignatius of Antioch, who was a bishop of the first century, who they say is a follower of John the Apostle, like we're talking the earliest person you can get, one of them, and listen to what he has to say. Those who lived according to the old order of things have come to a new hope, no longer keeping the Sabbath, but the Lord's Day, in which our life is blessed by him and by his death. That is St. Ignatius of Antioch, writing around 107 or 110 AD. Likewise, listen to what St. Justin Martyr has to say around the year 155 AD, one of the earliest Christians to write an apologetics treatise on the faith. He says this, We all gather on the day of the sun, for it is the first day after the Jewish Sabbath, but also the first day, when God, separating matter from darkness, made the world. And on the same day, Jesus Christ, our Savior, rose from the dead. Now notice, he didn't say anything about worshiping a sun god. He didn't say anything about worshiping Sol Invictus or anything else. They're talking about worshiping Jesus because he rose from the dead and celebrating that day because it's the day he rose from the dead. Nothing about sun gods. They're saying this is the new Sabbath. I mean, it's not technically the Sabbath. It's the Lord's Day. There's a distinction between them. But they're clearly worshiping on the Lord's Day centuries before Constantine was even born. Even a thought inside of his mommy's belly. And so we see that Christians are already worshiping on Sunday. Therefore, it could not have been invented by Constantine. It could not have been changed by the Catholic Church because Catholics were already practicing it since the beginning of the church. This comes from church teaching in the year 225 AD and it says this, the apostles further appointed that the first day, notice it says the apostles appointed says the apostles further appointed that the first day of the week let there be a service and the reading of the holy scriptures and the oblation because on the first day of the week sunday our lord rose from the place of the dead and on the first day of the week he arose upon the world and on the first day of the week he ascended up into heaven and on the first day of the week he will appear at last with the angels of heaven And I could name other Christians as well from the earliest centuries, long, long, long before Constantine. We see a common pattern that all Christians and all the writings of the earliest Christians claimed to worship on Sunday, to worship the Lord God, to worship the Lord Jesus Christ, to worship him and celebrate his resurrection. And even eventually they started celebrating on that day because of Pentecost, which also happened on the first day of the week. So there's a lot of symbolism which had absolutely nothing to do with the empty, vacuous claims of the sun god and sun god worship. 
The Lord's Day was established officially in Christianity as a day of rest at the Council of Elvira in 306 AD. Constantine established it as a day of rest uh, in his empire around 321 AD. Now, this is interesting because there's a site online that I was reading which is a pro-Sabbath. They say you have to worship on a Sabbath. They quoted the Catholic Encyclopedia and they quoted the Encyclopedia Britannica and other sources, but they I looked in the Encyclopedia Britannica because I, I just read it and it had nothing there. They literally made up the quote or messed up and got it from somewhere else. But I'm going to do a whole video debunking that. But the bottom line is they say that these sources claim it was on the Sabbath and they don't. They said that the Encyclopedia Britannica says that Constantine changed it, the whole law, and made it on Sunday, but that's not accurate. Constantine, it says in the Encyclopedia Britannica, says he created a civil law. Civil, not religious, not ecclesiastical, a civil law for his own people as a day of rest to worship the supreme God. And we know that this is referring to the God of the Christians because he favored the God of the Christians theologically and in all other ways, which is why he supported them with finances and gave them church buildings and helped try to build them up because his dad was even favorable to the Christians, but Constantine was even more so. Sunday was always focused since the beginning on the breaking of the bread, on the Eucharist, on what our Lord did for us on the cross and rising from the dead. So that's what Mass is. That's why we celebrate on Sunday. It's to celebrate the Lord Jesus who's risen. We're not stuck in the Old Testament with dietary restrictions as the Adventists are and not stuck with the old Jewish Sabbath as the Adventists are. We are people of the New Covenant, the New Testament, and the day of our Lord Jesus, the day he rose, the Lord's Day. I hope this video was helpful for you. I hope you understand now why all Christians worship on Sunday, except for the Adventists and a couple other small cults. And it's because it has been that way since the apostles and since the earliest days of Christianity. And if you're tired of people always yelling at you about this, then please help us get the word out there about this. Please share this video on your social media platforms. Please like it. Please comment on it. All of these things help to make these videos more popular so people can be evangelized and receive the gospel themselves. And please pray for Adventists that they stop being duped, that they stop following a false woman, Ellen G. White. And we have two videos on the errors of Ellen G. White and the Seventh-day Adventists. She has a book called The Great Controversy, which has hundreds, possibly thousands of errors. It is so error-ridden, we made two videos on it and barely scratched the surface of all the errors. So if you'd like to check those out, we will link those at the end. But please like, share, and comment. And please support our work. We only exist because of your charity. We only can save souls and change lives because of your charity. We only can bring souls back to the Catholic Church and to Jesus Christ because of your charity. We are a nonprofit that exists because of you. So if you would consider supporting our ministry one time, maybe monthly tithing, monthly donations, yearly, an end of the year donation, we would really appreciate it. And it all goes back to saving souls and changing lives. If you'd like to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, our podcast, or anything else, check it out all down below. Thank you so much for watching and God bless you.